Ah, Beaver Lake, the perfect location to fritter away a few summertime hours. Tonight, we'll tell you about a different child activity, ones perhaps for the more mechanically minded, and it's also a great chance for your kids to meet their favorite rock stars. That's next. Harley Davidson's and rock and roll. Sounds kind of appealing, doesn't it? Well, it's certainly appealing to this next group who have spent their time recreating choppers and meeting some rock stars in the process. Well, these things are tricky. Dual exhaust, metallic paint, these choppers have all the bling. Chrome illusion is where in the sun it changes colors and stuff. So when it's in the dark, you can see it's all red, and then in the sun it's like this. You don't need a license to drive these babies. They're bicycles, and they've been made by members of the Angels Chopper Bike Club. Basically, what we're trying to do is provide an alternative for the youth in the means of basically of building these bikes, uh, theming them out to their favorite rock stars. There's Ice Cube and April Wine. There's Jackson Brown. Nine-year-old Tony Harrington has made eight bikes, and it was his birthday that got the whole thing started. Tony was turning five. I found a little chopper bicycle at a garage sale. I worked at the GM dealer at the time. I brought it in there. I completely changed the whole thing and modded it, kind of like what you see, and then presented it to him as a birthday present. And then it evolved from that to this year, Sophia decided to build a bike for Ozzy Osbourne. That's what gave birth to the whole rock bike thing. And it took me three months to do all of it. And the funny thing is I finished doing all the painting and everything on the day of the concert. So I debuted it the day that Ozzy came. <laughs> I got the drummer and I got the bassist of his band, which is Tommy Clusetto's and Blasco. Just, that was really cool and they really liked it. And the funny thing is they actually wanted to buy it from me on the spot. I can't believe that something I've made someone like that would actually like to buy it. Like, that just makes me feel so good. That means it's fun. The club is about 15 members strong and includes kids as young as five, teenagers, and grown-ups, too. I couldn't figure out a name for my bike at first. All the kids saw the actual color of the bike, and that's why they gave me the name Iceman, <laughs> right? Because it looks like ice. Yeah. Members spend the bulk of their time in the shop, finding frames and other components where they can, the sissy bar is actually made from a table leg <laughs> and um, this is from, this is the bumper from a truck. So usually a bike build will take somewhere close to two to three months to do and then after they're done, ultimately each kid that does their bike, it's themed out to their favorite rock star. <clears throat> so with Tony for instance, he made one, this one, for Chris Cornell. So that's Chris Cornell right there signing the tank right there. And I'm like, Mr. Cornell, can you sign my bike? And he signed it. To Tony, you rule, Chris Cornell and stuff. Of course, building the bikes is only part of the fun. They ride in parades and go on organized group rides as often as they can. I love it. Yeah. It's great. Helping out kids to fulfill their sort of dreams to meet who they want to meet and give them inspiration to succeed in other things other than being on the street and doing stuff that they shouldn't do. You got a hold of your bike, Tony? The club is always looking for people to help with donations of old bikes and parts. The group is also looking for a space where they can gather to create their works of art. And I don't want it to cost anything. I have a sponsor, Pickers Consignment, and what happens is when a kid knocks on my door and says, hey, Mike the bike, I'd like to do a build, awesome. I get on the phone and I call my sponsors, Chris and Dustin, and they'll provide me with like a frame or something that I can use for the kids. And then that's the requirement. The kids have to do the work. I like building bikes and getting them signed. I like doing artwork. I like making the tanks. It's lots of fun. And I love just that you can brainstorm your own ideas and you can make it come to life. And I think that's really neat. If you can help or you'd like to join the group, check out their website at angelschopperbicycleclub.com. Lots of great pictures and other information on their website. You should check it out if you're interested. And if you have a possible space for the club, Mike the Bike would be interested in hearing from you. Much more still ahead on our show tonight, including this.
a quick and easy way to turn your TV into your computer monitor right in your own home. We'll have that coming up on Island 30. Hi, I'm Melissa McLeod. Coming up next on Island 30, I'll be showing you three poses perfect for you paddlers out there. Oh, doesn't work. Are you all tapped out? Well, maybe we should head down together to Priority One and check in with Peter and Scott. We're back here at Priority One Computer Service. Peter is with us, of course, as always, and we are talking, well, we got a variety of different things here. You're going to have to lead me through because this is above my oh, technological no. brain you capacity. You probably got I these think. at home already. Or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, through USB ports, you can do virtually anything these days. Um, this guy here, you can hook up an external monitor. Uh, without having to put in a whole video card, which you might not even be able to do with a laptop per se. But what's interesting is you can hook up six of these guys to your laptop or PC yeah. and have six monitors if you wanted to oh, go that, that far. That's smart. Um, stock traders, people doing yeah. a lot of things. Need Editors, a lot of, yeah, exactly. production companies. So yeah. very affordable, very easy. Just plug it in the USB port and you got say, a monitor. These aren't, these aren't that expensive. No. No, no very, that's very a great expensive. Idea. Similar product here. This will go USB to either DVI, VGA, or HDMI. So if you wanted to go USB to your TV, you could, or to that monitor that has that particular connection. And this is easy. This isn't. This is plug it in and yet. go. It's that simple. And is this sort of the same vein down here? Um, this is a new type of USB that's come out now, and it's called USB three as opposed to USB two. Yeah. Um, USB 3 is actually 10 times faster than USB 2. Okay. So to move data, say from an external hard drive mm -hmm. or something along those lines, this is actually very, very preferred because of the speed. And it is backward compatible, so if you had a USB 2 or a USB 1 device, it will slow down and, and work okay. at that oh, speed. Okay. So it's not strictly just USB 3. So um, speed-wise, this is uh, definitely the way to go. And then this is a hard drive here? This is a backup hard drive, backup and hard the drive. only reason I have it here is just to show you that oh, this okay. one is USB 3 compatible, so it will back up at that 5 gigabits a oh, second okay. instead of half a gig. So very, very quick. That's great. And now this, this is a really smart idea with yeah. popularity of PVRs. So this is your own personal PVR, if you will, mm -hmm. because sometimes we're getting movies over the internet or we're downloading them or whatever it might be. This here, you put a hard drive in here of your size and you've got a central depository in your home for everyone to share. Uh, this will plug into your router so mm -hmm. that all the computers in your home can then share the music or photos or movies or That's whatever you idea. decide to put on here. Um, it's, it will support 1080p, so Dolby, the whole bit, it's, it's got all those capabilities and it'll do any, anything from MPEG-1 to MPEG-4, so it's got all the formats covered. And not a huge setup? No, 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 fairly straightforward. And then, like I said, you can play them right back on your TV if you want because it has outputs for that um, or stream it through your home. That's great. That's a great yeah. idea. Uh, website of the week? Cookzillas.com. Cookzillas? Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're looking for a recipe or wanting something to cook and you're not sure, it's a great central uh, search engine to find those for hmm. you. And you can find them on our website at priority1.bc.ca. And we've put all of, uh, all of Peter's favorites, uh, Pick of the Weeks, have been on this website. So you can archive from previous segments and get up to date on what's, what's hip and what's now in the world of websites. Thanks a lot, Peter. That's it for us. We'll see you next time. Thanks very much, guys. Well, there's one token paddler on the lake today. He's probably heading off to see Melissa McLeod, who's here this week to talk about yoga for paddlers. Today I'll be showing you three really great poses for those of you who are paddlers out there. They're to focus on opening through the chest and shoulders and releasing the legs. They'll feel really great after being out on the water. Use a wall for your first stretch to stretch the chest. Bend your arm, place your forearm on the wall, keep the shoulder low, and then just turn your body away from that to get a gentle stretch right in the chest and shoulders. Breathe. 
Every stretch should feel comfortable and safe. Even if the stretch is strong, it should still feel really good. And try the other side. Notice how my elbow is lower than my shoulder because that helps to keep my shoulder down as well to reduce the tension up around here in the neck and shoulders. Release that. Come back to your mat. Dance or pose. Bend one knee. Grab where your shoelaces would be. Bring the heel a little bit closer to your backside. You could stay here, drawing the knee down towards the floor, or you could take it farther, stretch the other arm to the sky, drop the shoulder down, and start to tip yourself forward as you kick the heel into the hand. Keep the ribs coming in towards the body so that you're finding the opening at the hips and the shoulders, not overarching the back. It's a balance. If you need support, just be near the wall and use that for support. Have your fingertips there, or even a chair or a table in front of you. Come up, release, shake your legs out if you need to, and then try the other side. Bend, reach back, catch the foot, stay like this if you like, or go deeper, arm raises, shoulder drops, tip forward, ribs stay in, shoulders stay away from the ears, breath stays steady, and bring yourself up. Release the arms and legs. Bring the hands behind the back. Open the chest and shoulders, look up slightly. Bend the knees, lean forward at the hip creases. For a forward fold, head hangs down, knees can bend more, and then the arms extend up. This is a great stretch for the hamstrings, the back of the legs. But for a lot of bodies, this is a really tight area, so it will probably feel more comfortable if you bend your knees. And if your balance feels off, take the feet a little bit wider, that will help. Release the arms. Just bring the hands above the knees and round yourself up. These poses should feel great after you've been on the water or they'd even feel really good after you've just been sitting for a while and you're tight in your chest and in your legs. Bring your hands to prayer position. Let your head drop down. Thank your body for all its hard work. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste. Have a wonderful summer and I'll see you in the fall. Thanks very much, Melissa. Now, I don't know if he's made uh, baby ducks appear or disappear, but Murray Hatfield has lots of great illusions and tricks in store. Here's one more. Well, here at one of my favorite places to be on all of Vancouver Island, Murray's Trick and Joke Shop. It's a very cool place. And you know that it's sad that a magician always starts and ends with a card trick. Murray Hatfield, is that actually true? You know something? It's not just true, it's the law. <laughs> and uh, the truth is, I have somewhere in here a deck of playing cards that I'm going to get a little help from you, Stacey. Okay. Um, first of all, notice that the cards are all different. Mm -hmm. uh, it is no particular order. And uh, what I want you to do is to simply select any card, any anyone card. you like. Okay. So take any card. Now, don't show it to me, but do look at it. And uh, in fact, I have a pen here. If you would take that and sign your name across the, uh, the face. Okay. This makes that card absolutely unique to you. It is the only card in the world that looks exactly like that okay. one. Okay. Now, here's the idea. Uh, let's just uh, place your card down there, if you would. And uh, I'm going to take your card and mix it into the deck. Okay. Now, Stacy, my job is to do the magic. The magic happens that fast. Hmm. I'll bet you didn't see it, but look. Back here in my pocket, I have a wallet. Now, uh, take a look. Stacy, the wallet has a number of things inside of it, including a second wallet. Now, the second wallet is the one that we're going to be uh, paying attention to. <laughs> okay. Because inside of that, there's a zipper. <laughs> and inside of that zipper, there is a single playing card. And wouldn't it be amazing if that playing card <laughs> was the one with your signature? Oh my gosh, Marie, that's great. How did you first get into the magic business? What first attracted you to it? You know something? I was like many other magicians. I, I was 10 years old. My mom hired a, a kid magician to come to my little brother's birthday. <laughs> and something about it just resonated with me. So from that point on, I've been a, a real student of magic and a, a real fan. And uh, I've basically been doing it my entire life. Is there one kind of illusion or magic that's harder than any other for you? Um, each of them requires a very specific skill set. Mm. Uh, 
with cards, coins, close-up magic, uh, it requires a lot of uh, manual de dexterity and uh, a lot of training and experience. Uh, with the larger magic and illusions, then you're involving movement and body and music and, and stage management. So each of them requires very different things. When you combine them all together, if you do them properly, yeah. it creates a, a, an amazing show. Is there an average amount of time that it takes you to perfect an illusion? It just depends on the yeah. specific illusion. Sometimes they can be learned in a matter of minutes. Sometimes it can take months and months. Wow. Wow. Okay. Quickly, uh, let us know where folks can see you this summer. We are going to be at the Victoria Conference Center Theater, mm -hmm. uh, right on the backside of the Empress Hotel in downtown Victoria. And uh, shows are every weekend, uh, Fridays or Saturdays. Mm -hmm. You can get more information at www magicinvictoria, all one word, dot com. Magicinvictoria.com. Tickets are at the McPherson box office or here at Murray's Trick and Joke Shop. Awesome. Thanks so much, Murray. We're lucky enough to be able to give away a few tickets to Murray and Teresa's awesome show, an incredible evening of magic playing at the Victoria Conference Center on select Friday and Saturday nights throughout the summer. If you'd like to win tickets, drop us an email, island30 at checknews.ca for your chance to win. Murray and Teresa will put on a great show this summer. You should check it out if you can. Speaking of mystery, Gordy Tepper is checking this out after the break. Hey, Stacey, there's a dinner theater play out right now. Kelsey's one of the stars. Kelsey, what's it called? It's called Moira on the Oriental Rug. Okay, and uh, we'll find out why she talks like that and more about the play when I Look 30 continues. <laughs> actor will tell you what a challenge it is to capture an audience's full attention. Well, you can imagine how much more challenging it is if the audience is sitting at a table chowing down on a meal during your performance. Here's Gordy Tepper now to tell us more about the ins and outs of dinner theater. Hasn't anyone told you about the death? Stacy, these are local actors Kelsey Abbott and Pam Miller in rehearsal for Black Box Productions Dinner Theater presentation of Murder on the Oriental Rug. That outline looks kind of familiar to me. I'm afraid it was Shannon Stone, the famous movie star. Kelsey, that's her in the nurse's outfit. Stop by our studios to tell us a bit more about Dinner Theater. Well, it's a play within a play, and so uh, when the actors when half of the actors walk off the set, the other four are left to cover all of the parts. And so, of course, there's some gender bending and hilarity ensues. She was here for treatments well, under an assumed name. No, it looks like you have the starring role in this pretty showy looking nurse's outfit. Uh, well, it's not the starring role. It might get the most attention at points. Yeah. But um, no, it's, it's pretty evenly spread. But Who's your character? Um, my character's name is Dakota Montana. And she plays the nurse Hormonia Jones. Hormonia which is, Jones. Yes, which is <laughs> Dr. Overy's assistant. Miss Hormonia, would you please find Dwayne the handyman? And it's a complex little story that requires a good deal of attention, according to director Tara Britt. First of all, the audience is eating uh, and drinking as well. So it's trying, trying to keep their attention while they are doing other things. Although the dinner is mostly uh, finished by the time we start eating, but there's some clinking of glasses and... Um, moving of forks and that kind of thing. Last year we had a bit of um, serving delays, so we actually had to go out while people were still eating dinner and like bus plates and things. No, <laughs> well, you didn't, did yeah, you? Yeah, really? in our costumes, so we had to be in character, but <laughs> it was an experience. Once the tabloids get wind of this, it will be all over the news. Your character's a little ditzy. A little bit. She has to hide her lines around stage, so there's some frequent. Uh, Oh, looks of, I forgot my line. Oh, check my shoe. Ah, oh, I know my line. Are you okay with that, playing that type of a character? Uh, I think I was chosen for this character for a reason, actually. <laughs> I didn't want to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, all the posters, the handouts everywhere around town are you in the naughty nurse outfit. I know. What does that say? Hopefully it says funny. Well, I remember when she was nothing but good old Irma Lou Leibowitz. Girl voted most likely to conceive by the entire football team. <laughs> Kelsey and the troop are putting on this comedy murder mystery that diners can try to solve all through the summer at the Travel Lodge on Gorge Road. You can order tickets online at their website. Who's the murderer? A 
I couldn't tell you that. Oh, you have to come oh. see the show. Uh, I thought the ditzy nurse I'd be able to trick it out uh, of you. I don't know. Maybe I'm not as dumb as I look. Our show tonight, I'm Stacey Ross. Enjoy your evening. We'll see you again soon. love to hear from you. Send us your story ideas by calling 250-480-3767 or drop us an email at islands30 at checknews.ca.